Welcome back to the Single Malt Review. Now, we've recently looked at the 18-year-old Tomatin coming out of the Highlands, their distillery that we haven't really looked at in detail before, but had a great response to our video. Thank you if you watched it and enjoyed it. And a request to look at Tomatin's relatively recent cask strength offering. Mm, yes, indeed. And I wasn't in any way disappointed that mm. I did. Um, this one not only escapes the horrible ugly bottles of the new range, even though it's a new release, it's one of the one of the more stunning um, cast strength mm. batches that we have tried in a year that's had a great many cask strength batches, and mm. most of them have been good. So that should tell you about um, about where this whiskey is going mm. to rate. Um, and Tim has tried this one. I have not. Yeah, so I've, totally I've new tried. To me. Well, I, I've tried this much of it so mm. far. I've been enjoying it, so I thought we'd better mm. get to work on it before it disappears completely. Now, it's um, their cask strength edition. I believe it's their first one because I've never seen them, and it doesn't sport a batch number. Mm. So we'll say this is probably number one. And um, it's fifty-seven point five percent. So that's um, they're, they're not fibbing. That's pretty mm. well cask old strength there. And um, it's matured and blend of bourbon and all Rosso sherry casks. So no finishing going on here. Um, who knows if they've married them together at any point or whether they've just blended it together and away you go. I think that's probably the most likely, really. But um, there's another thing I wanted to show you here because um, a really good visual indicator of just how sort of robust and full-bodied a whiskey this is, mm. is how it looks on this fairly cool day down here. It's in a cool spring day here in New Zealand. And kind of chilly, and so, that's a well cloudy whiskey. If you look at that, that has gone really, really mm. murky. And while that might be the stuff of sort of nightmares for um, people trying to sell the whiskey to people mm. that don't know what this means, it is something that I absolutely, absolutely yeah. love seeing. And for a bit of comparison, mm. that's clouding up that much. Here is a full 29-year-old Glen Turret. Seeing that cask strength, and it's crystal clear. Yep, not, not mm. doing it whatsoever. So... Um, like, I Whatever. picked up this bottle, I tried to wipe off the condensation, mm. assuming the bottle was misted. It is not, that is just that cloudy. It looks like someone stirred honey into it. It has got a lot of the good stuff mm. going on. So, let's taste it. Little goes a long yep. way yeah. with this one, as yeah, we discovered this. last weekend. Ooh. So... At full strength on the nose. Oh wow, that is explosively mm. sweet. It's very, very sweet and it's hugely mm. syrupy. The first note they've got on the aroma is golden syrup mm. and I agree with that 100%. It's yeah, where you're from. really is like sniffing a tin of mm. golden syrup, which is more of a, that's kind of a European, British thing. I don't know mm. if you get golden syrup in America necessarily, but it's basically a uh, sugar syrup with a slightly um, burned quality to it. Mm. And it's could not be could not be more space. apparent here. And the aroma it's putting me in mind of the taste of barley sugars. Mm. Um, oh. There is there is fruit here, sort of yeah. citrusy fruit, more orange to me than anything else, particularly mm. and ginger pecans. Yeah, ginger quite a lot, like ginger snaps, ginger nuts as we call them over here. I don't think mm. they call them ginger nuts anywhere else in the world. I think ginger snaps is mm. um, is what they're, the the more common nomenclature for those those sort of tough, snappy ginger biscuits. Mm. But um, there's quite a bit in here. So tasting it at full strength. Mm. Oh, that's quite punishing. Mm -hmm. It's much less sweet than the aroma lets on. Mm. It's... There's almost too much going on to really mm. process it. Um, it's there's a, there's a lot of layers that's going through, but that alcohol is just so strong that it's kind of difficult to really tease apart what is happening. It's quite uh, spicy. I'm getting notes of unusual mm. stuff. Uh, allspice, saffron are both uh, hitting me out front. Yeah, it's got almost it's going to kaleidoscope of things going on there. I think there's too much going on at full strength so I've been I've been enjoying this one with a, um, a wee bit mm. of water What's habitually it? cloves and black pepper it is a real spice mm. medley at full strength very warm too I so, say yeah obviously the fiery alcohol heat so let's cut that down a little or a lot and see what we get yeah I've been cutting this down to sort of more like 43 46 percent mm. I think that's where it's kind of at its best and that makes it downright opaque putting that water in with it there mm -hmm. this is um, this is a real a real gem among unfiltered whiskies. Mm. So that 
It kind of freshens up the nose. That sounds, and takes the intensity oh, off. That's quite a a bit. really obliterated a lot of the sweetness off the nose for me. It's the yeah, the big contrast for me was it smelled much sweeter mm. than it tasted. Now the level of sweetness on the nose is about on par with the well, the sweetness of what actually hit my tongue. Yeah, much mm. fresher nose now, a little bit more of a savoury nose than it was before. And yeah, a little bit of that uh, actually a, sort of that that tinned vegetable funk on the nose for me, which is you know, not a, an aroma I like as mm. much. That slightly metallic, slightly tinned piece. There is a slightly more, there is mm. a slight vegetal um, aroma on it now, which is less common to get yeah. in your in your whiskey. But let's What's see what the flavour has got. Hopefully the flavour has gone in new directions. Mm. Mm. Now that takes a, a bit more like tomato that I remember. Mm. Sort of very, very sweet. It's a Highland distillery, but I think they have a bit, they lean very Speyside mm. in terms of their whiskeys. It's yeah, character. extremely Speyside. There's a lot um, less of a sweet, sticky fruit, which I'd mm. associate with Highlands. What I, what I really sort of, one of one of the key notes I get in almost all Tomatin is a sort of a soaked sponge cake, mm. like a trifle or anything like that. Um, the sponge cake oh, doesn't really see a lot of traction around the world these mm. days, but it is quite a particular thing like a it's sort of almost a floral sweetness and a mm. soaked sponge cake usually soaked in some sort of sweet alcohol um, there's a particular particular note to it which is I, I mean I haven't had one in years but any trifle fans out there will know what mm. I'm uh, know what I'm talking about I'm getting much less of that I'm getting well it's, imagine say a fruit medley mangoes pears guavas but mm. bereft of all their natural sweetness it's got those fruit flavours, but none of the fruit sweetness. That could be some of the sherry influence. Um, usually I'm used to a heavily sherry influenced whiskey tasting sweeter. And in this yeah, case, it's I'm much not closer sure. to the actual sherry itself, I think. I'm not sure exactly how much sherry we're dealing mm. with here. I mean, by the, the colour would suggest, you know, not a great deal. And I mean, it's, it's never going to be a great deal if it's a sherry dominant thing. It's mm. going to be marketed as such. Um, so I, I think the sherry influence here is probably running... Probably not more than 20%, mm. I'd say probably more likely 10 but that's well enough to bring a lot of those slightly darker, slightly fruitier sherry notes along for the ride. Mm. Oh no, I've got to say I enjoyed this more without the addition of water. You had that explosively mm. sweet and um, nutty... Well, and you're, you're not the first notes. person to yeah. say that. Um, the uh, I, I heard that when I picked up this bottle mm. from Whiskey Galore. Michael had that to say about it, that yeah. um, he preferred it at full strength. Um, I, I think I've got maybe just slightly less of a palate for mm. um, that really, really strong whiskey than other people do, but I have I have heard that sentiment, mm. that uh, people prefer this one at full uh, full strength. Yeah, it's a spectacular voyage of sweetness on the nose, with mm. that tremendous spicy and layered and... Um, peculiarly different yeah palette. so i guess like many of the cask strength um whiskies and batches that we've tried it's really a whiskey you can enjoy two ways yeah. um it's quite a quite a different animal with so water added honestly not enjoying this as much with the water added it's gone from just being less sweet mm. to being downright just slightly on the sour or metallic end of things i'm really enjoying it as much as mm. i did at first oh, well. so I suppose um, if you were if you're going to give it the benefit mm. of the doubt, give it a score based on its first incarnation mm. um, rather than the rather than the second, and I'll I'll do it on the second because I prefer mm. it with the water in it. Well, rating it overall, um, just based on my full experience of this as a whiskey, it gets an eighty-four. Mm. It'd be much higher if I was just reviewing it only in its cask strength form, straight up. Um, but I've got to take it for what it is and what you know, which includes. Having enjoyed it, diluted down to a more say sensible drinking strength. So mm -hmm. it still rates highly, but it really does suffer when you add water and take it down below what the strength first comes up out of the bottle. Mm -hmm. I mean again, no, fifty seven point five, that's a very high ABV, which is quite not a lot, for everyone. Quite a lot going on. Something I'm gonna drink um, a lot of. It's quite a quite a trip for mm. the tongue to go on there. Um, as for me, I, I think um, I almost uniformly dilute my um, cast strength whiskies down to you know m somewhere more between forty and fifty percent. It's quite rare that I'll um, go for something at the higher mm. at the higher strength. I just don't have the the fortitude of the buds for it. Maybe mm -hmm. I don't know, but. Um, I think more for me is that I have trouble, I feel the uh, the flavours are sort of cramped together at full strength sometimes when you're dealing with something with a lot that's going on and I find that um, if I put water in that broadens them out across the mm. tongue and I can sort of 
get my mind on them um, for a little bit longer and to do better sort of better tasting notes and mm. and generally just enjoy a whiskey it's more when I when I have that water yeah, in it. Usually the case for me too. Mm. I'll try something at full strength to taste its raw kind of elemental form, then add water to bring it down to something that's more easier to appreciate and get into. Mm. There've been some amazing whiskies like that. This one's special in that I enjoy it more at its full strength, but. Yeah. Scores, anyway. But at any rate, um, I won't go too, too far from yours. This one's an 88 um, ah. from me. I think um, probably still the, the, the world beater of cask strength whiskies mm. was the Aaron 12-year-old cask mm. strength. Still the only one to be sporting an age statement. Um, but this one not, not too far away. Another good, good quality uh, cask strength batch in a year of really, really mm. stunning releases in that category. So um, we will just have to soap and see just who else is going to jump on the wagon and give us a uh, cask strength version of an otherwise, um, mm. otherwise uh, incumbent line of whiskies because there's plenty of candidates. So we will, we will wait and see. At any rate, you will have to wait and see what we come up with next, but um, as long as I'm on it with the editing, it won't be too far away. This has been Single Mot Review. Thank you once again for watching. Slandra, we'll be right back.